to my world. My name is Ray DeJean, that's right. This is the mecca of comedy in Brooklyn, New York. This is where it all starts. You're about to see an explosive comedy show with different styles of comedy from all over the city and all over the country. We cannot, no 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 Everything else, shit, ass, damn. Penis is all right, not dick. Stay right there, it's gonna be incredible. Lapaholics Live, right here at Lindenwood Diner. We'll be right back. Good evening, everybody. Welcome out to Lapaholics. What's up, everybody? Make some noise. I don't want to talk about you tonight. And we're gonna become the group today. We are rappers of life. Come on. Where my old school people at? Wow. You know, you gotta watch out for the kids, man. My son, he's 18 now, but I had to really keep an eye on him coming up. Am I right, y'all? We gotta really pay attention. You know, his mom was losing a little control. I said, you know what? Bring him, let me let him stay with me. It's just him and him and me. You know, his room is downstairs, mine is upstairs. So one day I came home, 12 years old, caught him having sex in my house. Wow. There's two things that happens to us grown men. We get happy and also angry at the same damn time. Now, why are we angry? Because he violated the house. Because he wasn't even in his bedroom. He was in mine. <laughs> Listening to my Marvin Gaye CD, burning my candles, using my good sheets. You know the good sheets. This dude, I come up there, you know, catch him, and it looked like two elbows popping through the sheet. I'm like, what's going on? And I catch him, so I'm angry. I'm like, all right, as a father, I got to be, you know, on point. I don't want to see him see me happy. I'm like, yo, get downstairs. I'm going to whip your ass and put you on punishment. As soon as he left the room, I'm like, yeah. <laughs> you got some ass, and it's a girl? Yep, that's what I'm talking about. Nothing against homosexuality, but my dude is heterosexual. As a man, I was cool with that. So I'm cleaning up the crime scene, right? And I find a box of Magnum condoms. That's my shorty. This is my shorty right here, yo. This, this is my son right here. I'm talking to girls, how you doing? This is my son. Come meet my son. You ever meet him before? And I thought about it. I'm like, wow, man, my son's wearing magnums, man. That's cool. He holding them. I'm like, what are you doing with them things? Going parachuting with them? Or... And I thought about it further. I'm like, shit, I don't even wear magnum condoms. My son got a bigger penis than me. 12 years old. I'm a grown ass man. So now I'm in therapy twice a week. Every time I see the, hear the word big or large, I lose my goddamn mind. I'm out shopping, you know, we, go, we buying some, some uh, Brooklyn Nets stuff, some hoodies and stuff. I'm with my son. You know, we go to Models across the street from the Barclay. I'm like, yeah, you know, we're going to buy some hoodies. We're going to the game. So, yo, what size you want? Yeah, give me an extra large. What you hear me for? Get a small. Matter of fact, get a medium. He's like, what you hear me for? Don't worry about it. I'm getting a flashback about my son's penis. That's bad business, man. When you know you, you, you competing with your own son. You got a son, sir? You do? How many kids you got? Two. Are they yours? He looking confused like, ah. One possible two like a bad spades hand. You see this? <laughs> Welcome out to Laughaholics Live. Make some noise, man. Laughaholics Live. Comedy show. We got a great lineup for you tonight. And, um... We are very, very happy to have different perspectives in comedy. So you're going to see some people go to the left, some people go to the right. We're going to close it out with Michael Kaya. In addition to that, we have some funny skits that my friend Rob Stapleton and I did with that we're going to allow you to see it on the screen and get your reaction from that. So you guys ready to have a good time? Somebody say, yeah. yeah. Coming to the stage. This is a young lady that I've actually saw her start in comedy. She came to my stage when she was brand new. Please put your hands together for the very talented, all the way from Jersey, Tony Bird. Give it up, y'all. Aw, uh, man, I'm bringing that heat. I got them jokes, I got them laughs. That's what I'm coming with. My name is Tony Bird. Tony with a I, Bird with a Y. And I am a comedian. Now say M. Say M. Cut it off, DJ. Cut it off. 
What's good, y'all? How y'all feeling? All right, yeah, what's up, fellas? Saying I don't want no problems. The lesbian is in the building. That's right, the lesbian is here. Y'all all looking like, what? Yes, I am here. I'm in the building. You know what I'm saying? All my, all my lesbians, lesbians, make some noise. Oh, for real? <laughs> I did all that for that. <laughs> all my strictly dickly women, where y'all at? Make some noise. Oh, yeah, yeah. My dick is in a car, boy, they with me. I'm just saying. <laughs> And I know fellas don't like that joke. They like, you ain't got no bang, bang. Yes, the hell I do. I got a bang, bang. <laughs> bang, 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 bang. <laughs> and don't judge me because I'm a lesbian. Because, you know, I wanted to try the bang, bang. But, you know, I was 16. He was 19, y'all. Oh, man, I was ready. It was one of them summer nights. I was drinking a 40, smoking a blunt. You know what it is. You know what I'm saying? In the projects. He came at me like, yo, what up? I was like, hey, how you doing? Let's go to my crib. I was like, all right, let's go. <laughs> you know, I was ready. You know what I'm saying? We get in the house, the sun, I mean, the moon was shining. The stars was out. I'm in his room. I'm butt naked. Yeah, I'm naked before he come back in the room. That's how bad I wanted it. He came in the room. He was like, oh, my God, you look good, baby. I was like, thank you. He started taking his pants down. When that bang, bang fell down in here, I was like, wait a minute, wait a minute. Wait a minute, baby. Please, wait, 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 please. Please don't rape me. Wait a minute. He was looking at me like, you know, he was happy about his bang, bang. I'm looking at him like, I'm scared to death. Please, wait a minute. You know what I'm saying? I was scared to death. I was like, please just don't rape me. He was like, come on, let's get some Vaseline. I said, I don't care if you get molar oil, it's not gonna fit here. <laughs> he let me put my clothes on, I was happy. I ran up out of there. I hurried up and got a girlfriend after that. You know what I'm saying? Cause I thought all Bang Bang was that big. You know what I'm saying? I thought they was all that big. I didn't know, you know what I'm saying? I'm 16, I'm naive, I didn't know. When I got with my girlfriend, I told her what happened. She said, no, baby. They got zeros, ones, twos, threes, fours, fives. Had I met a five, I'd have been straight. It's crazy. It's hard being this. You know what I'm saying? My niece going to come up to me and say, Uncle Aunt Tony. <laughs> she said, Uncle Aunt Tony, why do you dress like a boy, Uncle Aunt Tony? I said, I couldn't tell her about the bang, bang. You know what I'm saying? I was like, listen, she's six years old. How am I going to say, you know, he had a bang, bang down here. You know what I'm saying? He scared me. I couldn't tell her all that. I said, just keep calling me Uncle Antonio. Don't worry about it, baby. I kind of actually like that name. You know what I'm saying? Word up. And I don't like when dudes come at me with that mean pound. They see me. I know I look tough. They come at me. They like, yo, what's up, chest pump, boom, boom. I'm like, yo, my man, you don't see these titties. <laughs> like, that hurt, man. <laughs> Give me a kiss or something. I'm a lady. Yep, I'm a lady. And I like a public bathroom, y'all. Oh, yeah, I love a public bathroom where there's like six and seven stalls. I come walking by with the tough walk, boom, boom. You know what I mean? From the back, I know I got that dude look. I come walking by. Dudes be outside with they, with they ladies, waiting for them to come out the bathroom. They see me coming by, they like, yo, my man! Yo, my man! You going in the wrong bathroom, yo! My woman is in there! I turn around, I look at him, I say, yo, you don't see these titties? I'm going in the right bathroom. And I'm gonna look at your girl. Yeah, you know the slit in the door? Yeah, I'm looking at your girl. I'm walking by like, ah, ah, ah. And I'm going to come out like, I just seen your girl. That's right. Hold, hold your girl. Lesbian is here. I'm not playing. <laughs> oh, God. And you know something, man? A few years ago, I had decided, you know, I was going to take off all this men's stuff and put on some lady things. And I did that. 
So I tried, y'all. I tried to be a lady. True story. Went and got a whole outfit. Got my hair done. I look nice. Dudes was hollering at me. They like, yo, baby, what's up? I'm like, yo, who you talking to, yo? <laughs> like, I forgot. <laughs> I had this girl stuff on. <laughs> then, uh, you know, it got critical. I was thinking about coming back, you know, coming on that side, you know? Guy asked me out on a date. I went. He comes to the house. I got flowers for him. He's like, yo, he's like, yo who's the flowers for? I forgot, man. I said, yo, just give them to your mother. You know, I got them for your mother. We out on a date. I'm trying to push him on the inside of the, of the, of the sidewalk. I'm like, yo, come on. You got to move over, man. You're on the wrong side of the street. I forgot he was the man. I kept asking. I, I, you know, the rolls was messed up. <laughs> we get in the restaurant, I'm opening the door for him. <laughs> He's like, yo, you know you a lady, right? <laughs> I forgot, man, I couldn't do it. Then I went, I had got some thongs too. I had on thongs, I was look good. I had the thongs on and everything. We get in the restaurant, but the thongs kept messing with my butt, y'all. I ain't gonna front. That thong, I couldn't deal with it. It was messing me up. We get in the restaurant and whatnot. You know, I go sit facing the door because that's my seat. I like to see what's coming around. He look at me. He said, yo, that's my seat. I said, what you mean that's your seat? He said, you know, I'm the man. I'm supposed to protect you. I said, yo, I don't even know you. <laughs> so y'all know what happened? Yeah, we sat on the same side of the table. That's what happened. <laughs> then that dog kept, me you know, the dog kept messing with me, right? So I got up, went to the lay. I went and found some scotch tape off the wall in the restaurant. Yeah, I went in the bathroom, pulled that thong out, and taped it to the side of my ass cheek. I'm right while I'm, I'm in the right lane now, okay? For real. So, so you know, I'm in the house, I'm chilling, got my boxers on. Got my boxers on, yeah. I'm in the house chilling. That's how I chill out. So I'm in the house, I'm chilling. Next thing I know, a mice run past me. I start doing, oh my God, oh my God, oh my God. You know, all the girl in me came out. I'm like, oh my God. I, I don't know why we do this when we see a mice. Oh my God, oh my God. I jumped on top of that bed. I said, who can I call? Because I'm not getting this mouse. So I called the dude that was trying to change me back. Oh yeah, I called him up. I was like, hello. He's like, yo, who this? I said, it's me, Tony. He said, yo, why your voice sound like that? I said, I'm thinking about coming back. You wanna come over? You know, he was at that house quick cause he thought he was gonna get some of this boy thing right down here. You know what I'm saying? <laughs> he get to the house, I go make myself look all sexy. Let him come in the house. Say, hey, you want something to eat? I cook dinner. You know, men like food. You like food? Yeah, they like food. <laughs> cook them something to eat. I'm just waiting for the mouse to come back out. <laughs> yeah, I'm waiting for that mouse to come back out. So as I'm waiting for the mouse to come back out, he talking to me like, you sure you weren't ready for all of this? I'm like, no. <laughs> Y'all know what happened, right? That mouse came back out. I'm like, oh my God, get the mouse, get the mouse. Yo, I turn around, he up on top of the bed talking about, get the mouse, get the mouse. <laughs> I was like, you know what, get out my house, man. Put my boxes back on, get out my house. You kidding me? Watch your mouth, people. Watch your mouth. They spitting in your mouth. Exactly. They spitting in your mouth. I'm outside talking to this guy. I don't know who he is. He don't know who I am. We just having a conversation. Next thing I know, a piece of his spit jump in my mouth. Exactly. I'm like, I'm looking at him like, dude, he got something. I'm like, I got to check the mic. I'm in my car. I'm on. I thought, listen, I'm going to the hospital. I'm in the, I'm in the car, spit coming down. Ah! I get to the hospital, the triage nurse, she's looking at me. I'm ah! 
She's like, what happened? Ah! I don't want to swallow. They was going to send me to the site wall because she didn't know what, what was going on with me. I swallowed then. I said, please, just give me the date rape pill, please. Just give me the date rape pill. Word up. So uh, me and my girlfriend, we broke up. Man, listen, I just want my thing back. That's it. I want my bang bang back. When I met her, I had the bang bang. I want my bang bang back. I call up. I say, hey, listen, I'm coming over to get the thing. You know what I'm talking about, right? The dildo. Yeah, the dildo. I say, hey, listen, I want my dildo back. I'm coming to get it. I'll be there to get it. She's like, okay, you could come. I get to the house. She opened the door. She throw the bag through the door and locked the door up. So I'm like, well, what's wrong with her? You know, we came to a conclusion that this was over. So I get downstairs. I said, let me check, make sure my thing is all right. You know what I'm saying? I open up the bag. Do you know she cut the dildo up? She cut the head off, the balls off. I'm like, who sits and cut a rubber? Are you kidding me? Yo, I called the police. I said, send everybody. She cut it off. It's gone. Next thing I know, the house surrounded the police, the fire department, the ambulance. I done messed up because I really went too far with it. You know what I'm saying? So the cop get there. He looking down at, you know, my private part because he think I'm a dude. He looking at me like, yo, where the blood at? I said, it's in the bag. He's like, where the blood? I said, it's in the bag. He opened up the bag. He says, this a cut up dildo. I said, it sure is. I just want my money back. You know they locked me up for impersonating a man. <laughs> Listen, y'all, that's my time. My name is Tony Bird. Tony with an I, Bird with a Y. Thank you. Yeah. Hold up. Yeah, y'all give it up for my dude. I mean, my girl. I mean, I'm not even sure. Y'all give it up for Shaman Man. I mean. I don't know whether to love her or punch her in the face. I don't know. I know one thing. I ain't bringing my wife around her. I know that. <laughs> yeah, she did a little seminar here last week on eating coochie. She's good at it, too. I'm like, wow. <laughs> I didn't even know all about all that. Little crevices we don't even know about, sir. <laughs> Come on, man. <laughs> the young man right there. You don't even have hair on your face. Trust me. Eat three coochies. You'll have a beard like Rick Ross next week. Y'all give it up for Larry Holmes' son right there. <laughs> Tony Bird did a good job. Clap it up for Tony Bird. Tony Bird. Um, I'm going to suggest to you, sir, that at the end of the night that you give me that sweater because I swear to God, if I put that on eBay, we're going to get a million dollars for that sweater, sir. That sweater is vintage slash classic. All right, W-B-L. <laughs> okay, what I want to do right now, ladies and gentlemen, I want you to pay attention to the screens. This is a, a skit from a show called The Robin Ray Show. My partner, Rob Stapleton, and myself, we put this show together, and it's similar to the Dave Chappelle Show. Almost the Dave Chappelle Show kind of meets Def Comedy Jam is what we're trying to do. So I want you guys to take a look at this skit and based on your reaction, I know how you'll feel about it.
motherfucker left me a quarter. Yo! You ain't seen nothing yet. We got a couple of more skits you're gonna also love. Okay, Emily Haitian's in the building. Sock by say, oh, oh. Well, we got a Haitian comedian that just came from Haiti. Just came from Haiti. I need you to welcome him with an American round of applause because if he does this show and he gets some laughs, he's gonna be authorized to get his green card. Ladies and gentlemen, please put your hands together. For the King Haitian comedian in Brooklyn, y'all give it up for Stanley Dubois. From Haiti, of course, so I talk about my background and my name being Stanley Dubois, which is kind of different. People pronounce it say Dubois, so I really talk about myself, you know. Damn, DJ, let that ride. Damn. damn. Big strap. Yeah. Yeah, I'm listening up. Yeah. All right, thank you, thank you, thank you. What's up, y'all? Uh, clap it up for Ready Show. Clap it up for Ready Show. Like Ray say, I'm Haitian. Any other Haitian in the building? Yes, I suck pussy too. <laughs> if you want, I will suck your pussy right now. <laughs> I'm just joking. I'm just joking. I'm joking. <laughs> hey, man, I'm happy to be here, man. I've been living in America for a short period of time, like 20 years. I went to high school, college. I got a degree. Just bought my first house. Can I get a clap? Just bought my first house. And Haiti, though. <laughs> I bought a chateau. <laughs> Cost about 755,000 Haitian dollars. That's $20 in America. <laughs> I'm rich, bitch. <laughs> I'm the new Bill Gates of Haiti. <laughs> Stuff is crazy, man. Yo, I was walking in here. I heard the weirdest stuff today, man. The weird stuff. I was walking. I hear this guy said, yo, I had a weird nightmare last night. I dreamed I got raped by 10 guys. I was walking by. I said, what? I guess his boy was Jamaican. His boy was like, you did like it. You should have wake up from the first one. But, Simon. <laughs> you let five, six, seven, eight, nine. Oh, shit, I was getting raped. No. You was enjoying yourself. <laughs> There's a difference. <laughs> I'm happy to be here, man. People always stereotype Haitians all the time. I tell someone I'm Haitian, and first question they ask me is, do you know voodoo? <laughs> like, no, not all Haitian know voodoo. Not all of us. Most of us, though. <laughs> like 99.999. I'm the one person that don't know how to do voodoo. I don't. Because when I do voodoo, good things happen to people. I did voodoo on this guy because he used to call me Haitian booty scratcher. Haitian HBO stand for Haitian body order. So I did voodoo on him two weeks later. He hit the lotto. He got rich. I did voodoo on my girlfriend because I want her to stay with me forever. She left me. Now she with the friends I did voodoo on. My voodoo ain't shit. <laughs> She ain't even call it voodoo, I should call it voodoo. Because they don't do shit. See, in America, y'all do drop by different from us Haitian. In America, you do a drop by like, po, 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 po. Shoot sure everybody, right? In Haiti, we do a drop by like, Pow. get my mouth. 
Everybody, oh shit, I can feel my legs. <laughs> Haitian motherfucker. Yeah. Oh oh. <laughs> Why I can feel my legs? Oh oh. <laughs> That's what we do. <laughs> you my girlfriend now. <laughs> I got the money. <laughs> I'm happy, man. Life is crazy for me. I mean, I remember when I first got to America, I used to go like corner store and steal like little items and stuff, like M&Ms and candies. One time I got caught, they called my mom, West Indian parents. She whooped my ass in front of everybody in the store. She didn't care. She was like, don't I tell you. My mom kicks Sue. When you go to the store, not to steal M and M's. Cause when your brother, your sister go to the store, they steal rice, chicken, peas, so the whole family could eat. You hear stealing M and M's. Go back to your room. I'm like, I'm sorry, mama. <laughs> Never meant to hurt you. <laughs> it's crazy. You know what I'm saying? But I, I don't know, man. I'm a little guy. Little skinny guy. Thank you. She said, that's all right. <laughs> Thank you. <sighs> I'm sorry, mama. <laughs> I don't know. I'm a little guy, man. The other day, my girl trying to play me. She take me shopping. She take me to Young World to shop. <laughs> Talking about look around, everything. Here's your size. Pick what you like. I walk around Young World. I see a couple of things I like. <laughs> Where else can I go and find two suits for $39? She told me she like being with me because me and her five kids, we the same size. And that would save a lot of money by going to Geico. <laughs> she crazy because she don't have a car. Crazy, man. Let me tell you a little bit about Haiti, man, just in case you don't know. Haiti was the first country in the Western Hemisphere that got independence in 1804. First black country with independence in 1804. Yeah. The only problem is, if you go to Haiti today, it still look like we living in 1804. <laughs> Ain't shit changed with the earthquake. <laughs> People ask you question like, are you going back to Haiti? I'm like, hell no. I didn't swim all the way from Haiti <laughs> to come to <laughs> just to swim back. <laughs> I'm here. He, yes, I said swim. <laughs> he said swim. Yes, I said swim. <laughs> he said swim. <laughs> you are so late. <laughs> Ladies, let me ask you a question, right? Statistics say a woman know if she's going to have sex with a guy the first five minutes they meet. Is that true, Ladies? So I've been here for about seven. <laughs> okay, somewhere, somewhere. What? <laughs> I'm messing. I'm messing with you, man. <laughs> My cousin just moved in with me, sleeping on my couch. My cousin, that's my heart, know what I mean? Last night I came home from work. I was hungry, tired. He had some food in the fridge. He wrote his name on it. <laughs> Big man, that's selfish, right? So I got mad. I wrote my name on the couch. Dubois, motherfucker. <laughs> right, my name on the sidewalk. 
Damn, this guy is so late. God damn. <laughs> That's what's up. That's your wife right here? Oh? Yo, who? Oh, you were friends. All right, it's all good, man. Don't be so aggressive, man. You Jamaican? That's like a hey. <laughs> you must be Jamaican. <laughs> Time is crazy, man. The other day they towed my car. Uh, crazy. They charged me $1,000 to get my car out. I don't know, but there was a Jamaican man in there with me. They charged him 5000 I don't know what he did, but Jamaican men in court start cursing at the judge. Jamaican men. <laughs> Blood clot. I so much money for me to take me care at the shop. <laughs> Judge was like, sir, no cursing in my courtroom. 6,000 Jamaican men. <laughs> Bumble clock. <laughs> I so much money. Judge said, sir, I told you, no cursing in my courtroom. 8,000. Jamaican men start searching his pockets. The judge was like, sir, what are you looking for? Jamaican man was like, me, I make sure me have enough money in me pockets so me could go tell you, go suck up your mother. <laughs> I was in court and display like, what? <laughs> Did he just say that to the judge? And Jamaican man, they call all oh, man. Mm, 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 mm. <laughs> you know he got his green card revoked. <laughs> now he posting on Facebook. <laughs> I say, one love. <laughs> Let's get together and be all right. My name is Stanley Dubois. Dubois, like W-E-B Dubois. Jackson, um, Janet Dubois from Good Times, yes. I hate when people mispronounce my name, call me Dubois. Because I don't do boys. One time I was sick, I went to the hospital. Gig doctor came from Kings County, real flamboyant, came out the back, he was like, oh, do boys? <laughs> Who do boys? <laughs> Is there a do boys in here? Stanley do boys? I jumped up, I was like, Stanley don't do boys. <laughs> Stanley do women. And with a name like Du Bois, I can't go to jail. Look at me. Five, 385 pounds soaking wet. I know there'd be some big dude in jail straight out of Brooklyn be like, yo, son. <laughs> yo, son. <laughs> I heard you Du Bois. Like, no, Ray Dijon Du Bois. <laughs> uh, yo, that's my, uh, uh, yo, I had fun with you guys, Stanley. Thank you. I swear to God, I knew he was going to do that. That's why I have an immigration officer waiting right outside right now. He will be deported. He gonna be on the boat. Oh, oh. <laughs> oh, oh, he don't know. I'm half Haitian. He don't know. I got connections. I'm Puerto Rican and Haitian. That make me Dominican. <laughs> play with me, boy. I'm like, oh, oh, marico. That's right. That's right. Well, you know, Haitians say oh, oh for everything. Came too quick. Oh, oh. <laughs> that don't happen to nobody else but me? No, these dudes in here be fronting. Hi, let's give it up for Stanley Dubois, Haitian. Funny as hell. 
Please put your hands together for the very talented Mr. Barry Ribs. Y'all give it up for Barry Ribs. My uncle was a Bosch Bell comic named Danny Leeds. I was a class clown, and here you are having Barry Ribs do what I was basically born to do. No, I need some more. Hit some more. I got to feel it some more. Okay, that's good. <laughs> February is a special month for me. My 22 year anniversary. Doing comedy, that is. And I have never bombed in 22 years. Let's keep the streak alive. And I do comedy all over the country, and nobody knows me. So I'm gonna introduce myself. I'm Barry Ribs. And I am a cancer survivor. My wife was a cancer. I'm now in remission. Nine wonderful years. Available if any woman needs a green card. West Indians, make some noise. I'm actually not a comic. I'm from immigration. Born and raised in Brooklyn, New York. Raised by a single mother. And my father lived with us. His name was Phil. Short for Phil of shit. It was very confusing growing up with my mom, who was absolutely gorgeous. She looked like Marilyn Monroe and acted like Mike Tyson. She would remind me quite often, son, question my authority, I will knock you out. I would like to dedicate this set to the woman I love. If not for her, I would not be here tonight. My attorney. <laughs> 1983, I caught a 24-year sentence. Made a mistake. Said I do. Met the little lady at a singles dance, 1982 BT, before Tinder. The first date, I took her to the beach. If I knew then what I know now, I would have drowned her. She was hot in that pink bikini, but she didn't believe in bikini waxing. I thought I was dating a German Shepherd. <laughs> I want to dedicate this set also to the lovely young ladies that work the McDonald's counter <laughs> with their questionable attitude. If not for them, I'd have no idea I was an old asshole. If I ever come back, I want to come back with black skin. Black skin lasts a long ass time. White skin ages very quickly. I'm only 25 years old. Wish my folks were alive to see that their beautiful baby boy 
now looks like the professor from Back to the Future. Yeah, right? You see that? Kiss my black ass. If there's a New York City parking ticket agent here tonight, I need to talk to you for a moment. I believe you're taking your job a little too seriously. What I'm thinking is, if you took your schoolwork as serious as you write tickets, you would not be writing tickets. Since you're so brave in that wannabe police uniform, please stand up and wave to the rest of us. Because I'm sure there's a lot of us here that would love to knock you out. Thank you, sir. I love being a comic. It's one of the few jobs left that Mexicans can't do. I want to acknowledge the married women tonight who kept their maiden name because they know it's a matter of time before they take it back. Gentlemen, you could tell a lot about a woman by her eyebrows. If a woman takes off the two brows that God gave her and replaces it with a number two pencil with no arch, just one line straight across her forehead, tells me she's excellent in geometry. I want to acknowledge the lesbians. We live in a PC world. Thank you, lesbians, for taking some of the ugly bitches off our hands. Don't worry, Tony left. She had another show to go. I want to acknowledge the women that think they're hot and none of us look. I want to acknowledge the good man who will stay with a good woman. Men, good men, have a bad reputation for some reason. I am going to acknowledge the good man tonight. Good man will stay with a good woman until her face and or body hits the wall. <laughs> if anybody's interested, I was in Vietnam a year ago on vacation. <laughs> Ladies, you are socialized to think that every man just wants you for your body. Not true. Some of us want you for your PIN number. <laughs> Gentlemen, if this applies to you, you would like to take a woman out on a lovely steak dinner on a regular, but you don't have that kind of money, there is an alternative. Look for a woman with three to five teeth. A woman like that would not appreciate a steak dinner, but she'd appreciate a bowl of oatmeal and or a jar of baby food. Single people, Barry Ribb's gonna be your hero if you do not wanna waste your time with the wrong person. Listen up. This is what you do. When you meet said person, immediately you take them to a store that sells lotto tickets. 
put their finger under the scanner. If it says, sorry, not a winner. <laughs> My brother's here tonight. I don't mean to start any trouble, but I believe some of you take your black women for granted. Black women are naturally sexy. They got that war down that white girls have to go to school to learn. <laughs> when you take these ladies out, you need to be patient and mess around with their eyebrows, toenails, fingernails, hair all done, everything done. You fancy, huh? You fancy, huh? Most of these ladies, when they come out, practically shave their entire body. Special shout out this evening to the ladies that have hair between their titties. That shit is hot. I twirl that shit up in between orgasms. Cause I'm a freak. Everyone in this room has at least one fear. Here's my fear. After a show, I'm afraid I'm gonna get hit by a car while somebody is text messaging and the message is going to say, you weren't funny anyway. I'm really not in a good mood, but the show must go on. Recently, right before Valentine's Day, my woman of three years left me. These hoes ain't loyal. <laughs> Nothing more desirable to me than a woman's body and or a winning Powerball ticket. In no particular order. When you ladies walk, check this out, you swing one arm. I saw a woman in Times Square take it to the next level last week, and all I kept on thinking, how much sexy is she be if she had a second arm? I would like to acknowledge the Cougars tonight. Make some noise if you can. I apologize for your hot flashes looking at this stud. To you younger ladies, I want to apologize for your moist panties. May I suggest you bring a liner next time? I want to acknowledge the grandparents tonight who are still in denial. <laughs> when I was growing up in Crown Heights, my first black friend was named Rodney Dunlap. And Rodney used to steal my Hebrew books, which led me to believe at a very young age that all black people were Jewish. I want to acknowledge our MTA employees tonight. Show of hands, please. <laughs> Wonderful service. <laughs> Absolute magicians can make humans into sardines. Because of you all, I've had to dye my hair gray and give myself a bald spot so maybe I could find a seat in the senior citizen section. I recently made a complaint about a rude bus driver and the woman on the phone was rude. We're all New Yorkers pretty much, right? Don't we love this new profession? It's the oldest one about beggars. 
Beggars to me are muggers with manners. I refuse to give anybody a dime unless they're wearing at least one shoe. <laughs> MTA, you're very hospitable to a lot of people living on your property. It's a nice aroma in those trains. <laughs> Wonderful aroma. Very hospitable, MTA. Can we have a round of applause for our MTA employees? If this wasn't going on television, I'd have some choice words. <laughs> Good news, people. I, my side piece and I are expecting. I do know the vernacular. I want to acknowledge the young people who take care of us old heads by taking that see something, say something really appreciate you protecting us from the terrorists. You are wonderful snitches. <laughs> Before I became a comedian, I was a sex educator. Number one question my female students would ask me, Professor Ribs, how often should I have my breasts examined? My standard answer after every class. And fellas, the ladies were complaining about you. They said you know how to get down, but you do not know how to make love. You're missing an ingredient it's called foreplay. You have to understand something about a woman's body. She has like an engine inside of it. She needs those oils to circulate. Right, ladies? Because it's Black History Month and I'm a generous man. I am willing to demonstrate on your lady what foreplay is while you watch. <laughs> I want to acknowledge the parents tonight that are doing the job. We need you more than ever. I have a son named Jason. Next month, he's going to be 27 years old. We adopted him when he was five days old. He got two homes. One is outside in Howard Beach, and the other one is in Rikers Island. Jason is now vacationing on his island home. I had a feeling what his future was going to be. At the age of eight years old, I said, Jason, what do you think you want to do when you get bigger? He said, Daddy, I want to beat the shit out of you. <laughs> Jason's hero growing up was 50 Cent. Jason hasn't made 50 Cent legally in his life. We have a special bond. He recently friend requested me on Facebook and I deleted him. <laughs> it cost us $29,000 to adopt him. It was either him or a Mercedes. I think I made a mistake. I want to leave you with this. Most important thing I could say at every show is to the gentlemen. I would like to remind you, gentlemen, very important to go to the doctor on a regular. Right, ladies? I practice what I preach. About a week ago, I had a prostate exam, a legitimate one in a doctor's office. If you do not know what that exam is all about, it's real simple. The doctor inserts his middle finger right in your asshole. It's the best $10 copay I've ever spent. Yo, it felt good. Hashtag no homo. He said, Barry, you check out. Come back in two years. I said, Ugh. 
No way, Doc, I'm coming back tomorrow. You and I are now in a relationship. June 2nd, I'll be at the Apollo Theater. Hope I see you or tell somebody else. God bless you all. Thank you very much. Barry Ribs, y'all give it up for Barry Ribs. Come on, give it up. Give it up for that white man. He got a lot of nerve coming here and talking. Oh, shit. He was funny, though, man. Come on, y'all could do better than that. Give it up for him. You all right over there, bud? You good? You sure? I'm trying to get you a little Rick Ross beard? Like, what's up? Now, he was talking about taking exams. How many guys in here get physicals all the time? You get your physicals? Get the, you get your physical there, Brian? You got to get your physical. I had my physical about eight months ago. I found out I had high blood pressure, high cholesterol, the whole nine. They told me to go on a diet. I lost 48 pounds. That gave me a round of applause, man. That's right. And I discovered that my nuts still work, so I'm good. But you know what? You know, ladies and gentlemen, where we come from, you can't lose weight without somebody talking about you. Am I right? There's always a rumor attached to that shit. You seen Ray DeJean? He lost mad weight. And they always do the same thing like to be here. He lost mad weight. Like, well, what happened to him? I don't know. I think he got that shit. That's a diagnosis in the hood. What did he got? Some disease. I don't know. That shit. Like, that's funny. Well, what is it? I don't know. Maybe it's a combination of Ebola, HIV, Legionnaire's disease from the co-op city. I don't know. And isn't it funny that the reaction from your friends is always the same when they see you and they look at you and they go back, wow, you lost a lot of weight. And then the response is always the same. They lean over to you like they're going to tell you a top secret. You all right? <laughs> yeah, I'm all right. I went on a legal diet and I lost the weight. That's just, just, I mean, it's messed up when people think that you, all of a sudden, you high, you smoking crack. <laughs> well, let's give it up for all the comedians that hit the stage. Right